Check, check, one, two. What's good, folks? This is your boy, Ella, and we're doing something a little bit different here. Now, the whole purpose of this video is to show you guys how the auxiliary or bus works inside of Studio One this time, all right? I did a video before in Logic Pro, that is, but I wanted to take a spin, a little, uh, something different here, you know? Now, now in, inside of Studio One 3 here, I did not have what I need to produce something pretty decent to show you guys, all right? So what I did was, um, well, actually, I didn't download all of the extra content because I'm working on my laptop, you know? It looks a little bit different from other videos, right? So what I did was I didn't have all the instruments, so I just, you know, just decided to do something just a tad bit different. So I used my voice instead to kind of fill the drums up or whatever, and I'm not really you know I, I whatever it's it's not like how i would want to show people you know <laughs> it's like really 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 terrible but i just want to show you guys how the um the auxiliary you know how it works and, and how when you are mixing or you know production in general how how not to use a lot of cpu you know and how to how to how to maximize your you know your workflow and I'm just messing up my, my Zoom. Okay, so basically this is what I got. So, started out with something like this, right? Then brought this in here. And then just brought this, and I just pulled this stuff from the library. I don't have my keyboard or MIDI keyboard with me at the moment or anything MIDI to, to control anything so I'm just pulling stuff alright it's a little whirly road sound here and this is where I begin to do my thing This experiment here. All right, that's my little hats right there. All right, so the whole purpose is just to show you how to how to bus. Um, how to use the busing or auxiliary function inside of Studio One Three here? All right. Um, inside of Studio One Three, it's, it's it's so much you can do to achieve things. It's like I will be all day trying to explain all of this to you, but just to give you the basic functions. Say, for instance, I want to. First of all, let's go. What I like to do, first of all, is if I'm in the range window, say, for instance, I want to, you know, group all of these together here. You guys see me do this several times already, you know. If I want to group that and say base elements or something like that, the good thing about this is this, I can group this together. I can expand or I can collapse but the thing is, okay, it, it, it does expand and collapse in, in in my mixer window as well. But what I was going to explain to you guys is that I don't have, if I collapse this here, I don't have a, a main channel, a main bus channel where I can control everything from. So basically what I have to do here is just something simple. If you are, if your screen looks like this, you're not going to see it. So you have to zoom, you have to zoom out or zoom in, make it bigger <laughs> in order to get to this screen here. So then you can add a bus to it. So now inside of your mix window, you should be able to see. You should be able to see your bus, your channel here that we just created, which is this here. 
all right you can also recolor and then they color everything in that bus so if i want to you know recolor the, the bus it, it'll take everything and recolor you can also go individually and recolor you know back and forth whatever you know it's really cool to, to be able to do that so now i created a, a channel and you see you know different um different plugins up here because the only reason you would do that is to achieve certain things on s certain channel. You understand what I'm saying? You don't want to put a EQ on each channel. So say you got vocals and things like that, and whatever instruments or whatever you're doing, you don't want to, if you're trying to just put EQ and trying to achieve one simple thing, you do not want to put the same EQ across the board. You see these certain EQ that I have, well, not EQ, but certain plugins that I have to achieve, you know, I, I put compression on here. You know, let's listen to that. First of all, let's, that's, that's bare. Let's turn it on one by one. As you can hear, I, I tried to achieve something different. For specifically for this one track here and I add a compression all right but if I want to add compression to them all together then I can do that I can also do this here you know I can also just add compression to let's see and that's whatever compressor you're using I can also add compression to, you know, just that one or or several several channels. So, for instance, if I want to add compression, you know, I just I just drag my my plugin, and and you can pull up whatever plugin that you like to use from from your list, and just drag it straight to the sins. And it automatically create a compression track or effects track here. All right. And all I have to do next is just drag. Boom. Boom. You understand what I'm saying? So now you have compression. All right. But I, I sort of really wouldn't use it this way. That, that was just an example. If I want to add reverb or something... I will use it this way. Um, actually, I could have just left that there. I don't know what I was thinking. I could have just could have just left all of that there. <laughs> all right, let's add that effects channel back. Okay, I guess it didn't didn't add back. But let's go to a reverb. Say say. Reverb, for instance, that's a good one. You know, oftentimes people will add reverb one by one to each 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 track. If you do that, your CPU here will eventually overload. You know, we're at about eighteen, about twenty percent. We spiking around twenty percent. And the reason why it's going that high is because I have several things going on in the background yes if you have things going on in the background on your computer you know it definitely takes a toll on, on the cpu as well and especially when once you start using plugins at the plugins at the plugins the stuff will begin to, to to add up you know so this is the reason why we use auxiliaries or, or bus channels is to to help avoid using a, a bunch of cpu in our in our sessions so i know this all looks confusing and i'm probably going too fast but this is this is the basic the basic structure the, the, the basic analogy of using auxiliary or or bus it, it essentially the same thing so we're using reverb and you can also relabel it say you wanted to say verb i oftentimes say verb just make things a little simple for me 
And so the 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 actual send, you know, you sending the, that track to that that channel or the auxiliary channel will actually re relabel itself automatically. And you can resize these things. I'm on my laptop here and, and, and things is this looks totally different. It looks it actually looks like cramped in, but I hope you get the picture. So I could just take that over. And I can adjust the reverb as I need to. You know? I'm not trying to get anything perfect here, but I'm just trying to give you just a basic idea. You know, this is this is how you use your your bus or auxiliary channels to achieve one simple thing. So if this is EQ compression or any other effect that you're trying to achieve, just use a effects channel. You know, you don't have to put a reverb every sing you know every single time. You know, this just helps save CPU here. <laughs> Say I want my my hats. You know, this is how I would do that. So that's that's you know I I've pretty much explained to you guys two ways you can do it. You can you can pack things in a folder, like what we did here. And when you pack things in the folder, same file. Or well, same same channel here. We're gonna make everything one color, so it less confusing, right? You can go ahead and put whatever you want on this on this channel. So say we go for I don't know. Let's go for something that will make it sound weird. Just 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 to be different, you know. Let's solo that. You know, whatever you want to do. Say like I feel, um, I don't know. Let's add a big crush. Now you can add a big crush on here and turn the mix down. You know, that's one way that I do things. Or you can just use what we just discussed just a few minutes ago or a few seconds ago and just add a uh another effects channel and just send stuff individually there there's several ways you can do things to help save oh wrong button All right. I hope that that was <laughs> simple enough. I, I I don't think I could have explained it simpler than that. But basically, all of this, all of all of this is, and this can be used. You know, anybody anybody can use this method. If you are a mix engineer or a music producer, me myself, I use this method all the time. If I want to achieve certain sounds and use different effects, I always use the bus or auxiliary method to help me save on the CPU. Um, another method could be uh, if you are a producer or beat maker, you will probably, and you've seen me do this many times, you will probably do something like this where you will uh, bounce this down as audio, 
And then that's also another thing. That's also something that will help save CPU because right now this is MIDI instruments right now. And MIDI instruments also pull CPU. Yes, it do. You know, all of this being up at the same time, it, it also pulls on you, you know. But for something like this, it's, it's short. It's not that big. I'm barely touching my CPU. It's, it's, it's fine, you know. I'm okay. But when you get into the tracks that I do, I get, you know, past 50 and up to like 80 or something, just production by itself sometimes. One time I've gotten to like past 100, and that just really depends on what you're doing. Then, you know, this video will probably help you. But if, if you're not doing that much, then, you know, you know, you, you, you should be okay. But if you want to save CPU, then this is probably the better route for you. All right. I hope this video helped. Again, my name is Ella. Music is art. You're the artist.